highest umbrella body of the Ndibo, both at home and in diaspora. Senior officers in this occasion, members of the National Assembly, serving and non-serving, and members elect, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that time is no longer friendly, and at this point, it's just for us to do the necessary ritual for the consumption of this color knot in accordance with the norms and tradition of Ndibo. Ndibo ekelele mono. Oji unuwetra. Ukuta local government unuwetra oji. So I get me oji a co grow from ukuta local government to Imo State. Kaza oji Ndimo. So Agni Bruya, Bujende unra license. He may help on a pastor this oji. And then he see Benwo, John and Kenwo, glory. So I may be the chairman, Council of Traditional Rulers Imo State. He will now look for his uh, brothers and sisters, both senior. Ndeyo. Oh, you say, you must take a leg. I say, hold off of a hold on and go. And I am an occur in a one near less of my coyan and ledo. And out of work, a mother de cam Obi for Binubu as you are my own. I want to be most a tuna who noji. There's a moon and who noji. There's a deal in Mosin and Guna who noji. Kai Horia Muna Ibrabia. A bogey. Gungo Sibri. I'm going to say who do for you are an uncle in God. What are you? Demon Devil. After all, Jojo will come down. Oni, come his way. Oni. Received and seen it in the name of our Creator and our ancestors. Ah, because no Munda in the land of the state, no Nahuna. Yes, I want you to say when who calls you Zimbo. Ah, we see I go governor Buluzo. Sorry, I'm not doing it. I don't know. Chairman. Our Creator and our ancestors. Uh, as a Zoribo neighbor,
Project lovely governor Mukoma. I got drinking number. Are a project friendly governor. The lion of him. On a project we have no no. So I am coming. Who say man no day na di mo one day. Invite to the microphone, Joe Marines. Mr. Joe Marines, could you please come to the microphone to give us this brief background of the Oguta Lake and the Russia River, leading to the concept of the development mm, 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 and see an project in the Suck this way, or you can go. Ew, ew, me, and that's one day now. Hey. We appreciate your presence. Vice Admiral Ezra in the Gambo, Chief of Naval Star, you are welcome. You are welcome. Uh huh. By the river song, Uguta Lake. Ice, ice, ice. Sir, okay. Sir, come this way. The microphone is now working. Could you please come this way? Sorry. Appreciate your presence of our chief of defense, sir. General Erabon, we shall be well with you. Bring it down. Um, 
um, good afternoon, everybody. We would like to welcome our distinguished uh, guests. We would like to welcome our distinguished guests, especially our Vice President, uh, Professor Yemi Osiba John, GCFR, uh, Chief of Defense Staff, the Chief of Naval Staff, and all other senior uh, military and uh, security services officials here present. Um, I'm supposed to give a brief historical background of the uh, Uguta Lake Area Development Project. The Uguta Lake um, has been a historical focal point of trade and uh, international and uh, trade between the Uguta community and the communities of the uh, Niger, Lower Niger Delta. As a matter of fact, uh, this part of the lake, this bank of the lake where we are standing now, is historically referred to as the Calabari Beach. It's not a new name, it's been there for centuries. Um, the whole idea of uh, developing an uh, agenda for the development of the Yoguta Lake area is like a rehash of what was historically in uh, operation. Uh, before the advent of colonialism, there was a lot of uh, trade between these parts all the way down to the uh, River Rhine areas, the uh, Atlantic coast, and all of that. Essentially, um, because of uh, the abandonment of this uh, access way, all kinds of uh, illegalities took place and uh, the waterways became extremely unsafe for the uh, development of uh, economic activity. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, oil production was reduced to almost uh, nothing because of uh, the activities of uh, illegal uh, oil thieves and all of that and all of that. Now, the government of Imo State under the able leadership of uh, distinguished Senator Hope Zanima uh, quickly realized that any agenda for development for this area cannot really be successful without addressing the critical issue of security. Security underlies everything that we do. As a matter of fact, because of oil bunkering, oil uh, thieves, uh, oil stealing and all that, the revenues of the state accruable from oil went down very, very dramatically. So it was also in the enlightened interest of uh, the state government to look for ways of shoring up uh, revenues by making sure that uh, the activities of uh, oil bunkers was uh, minimized, if not completely eliminated. It is the belief of His Excellency Governor Hobo Zarima that this is the way to go. In this regard, he has been able to also convince the federal government of Nigeria to partner with him and uh, see costs why the route, the intervention and the cooperation with the Navy to stem this uh, ugly tide of insecurity is the way to go. Um, what we are flagging off here today is the beginning of a very long process. We are flagging off the, um, the commencement of the uh, survey, the pre dredging survey for the project. His Excellency the Vice President will graciously do that for us and give us uh, the kick required to start that up. When that is finished, we estimate it's going to take about uh, six, seven weeks to do that. Um, we'll also be doing some um, environmental and social impact uh, assessment uh, on the uh, selected route of the uh, proposed uh, uh, channel. When we finish that, we'll then commence uh, dredging. I have with me here uh, the representative of uh, the internationally renowned Boscalis Westminster Dredging Company. Uh, we know them in Nigeria as Westminster Dredging and Marine Limited. But internationally, they are known as Boscalis Westminster. So at the end of the uh, survey and all of that, we'll hand over the data to them, and then uh, they will commence with the dredging activity 
after making sure that all the T's have been crossed and all the I's dotted. I uh, have with me uh, Engineer Udensi. Um, I'll take the uh, leave of, uh, his vice of the Vice President and the dignitaries gathered here to uh, have him give a word or two to reassure us that that is the process and that is the way we are going to go. Thank you very much and once again welcome to this uh, occasion. Thank you. Engineer Udensi. Thank you very much, um, His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Yemo Sibanjo, and His Excellency, the Governor, Senator Hope Ozadeba. We are, I'm here representing Boscalis, Boscalis Westminster Dredging International. It's the number one dredging company in the world. And uh, here in Nigeria, we are known as Nigerian Westminster Dredging, uh, Nigerian Westminster Dredging and Marine. And uh, we also have been dredging in Nigeria for the past 70 years and above. So we are here to show our, uh, our concern, our support to Imo State Government that we are available to go along together with Imo State Government to see that this project is achieved in terms of dredging and making it accessible to the Atlantic that vessels can move from Atlantic and also get to here in Uguta. That's what we've done everywhere in the world and that's what we, we should do and that's what we're going to do here. Thank you and God bless you. May we kindly put our hands together once again for them as they make their ways back to their seats. Thank you, sir. At this point, may I humbly request the hydrographer of the Nigerian Navy, Rear Admiral C.E. Okafo, to kindly come forward and give the technical brief. The hydrographer of the Nigerian Navy, sir. The special guest of honor, sir, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Professor Yomi Oshibajo, please permit me to stand on the already established protocol. I am Rear Admiral C.E. Okafor, the hydrographer of the Nigerian Navy and the coordinator of the Uguta Lake, Orashi River. We are selected. These we are Sambraro River and New. Calabar River near Boni. The distance from Oguta Lake to Sambraro River is about 248 kilometers. That is about 134 nautical miles. While the distance from Oguta Lake to the new Calabar River is about 258 kilometers. That is 140 nautical miles. Activities to be conducted during the development of sea access route from Uguta Lake to the Atlantic include the predaging hydrographic survey, the environmental impact assessment, dredging and canalization, as well as installation of first international standard survey procedure will be adopted in this project to ensure that sustainable sea access route is provided for Imo State towards facilitating improved maritime security, transportation, and socioeconomic development. 
On this note, special guest of honor, sir, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Chief of Naval Staff for fostering the partnership between the Nigerian Navy and the Imo State Government, which has given us the opportunity to be part of this epoch-making event. My team and I shall do our very best to deliver this project as scheduled. Thank you very much and onwards together. <laughs> we can do it better. That is the hydrographer himself. Put your hands together for this great gentleman serving Nigeria. General Chief of Defense Staff, Ekaraka. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, permit me, sir, to allow some justified and recognized voices to add to what we are gathered here this afternoon for. And I'm sure these are internationally acclaimed personalities who understand what time is. And so I am sure they will do it as quickly as possible in this assignment. We are talking about goodwill messages to this great event. May I start by inviting a former INEC chairman, Professor Morris Iwo, to please give us a goodwill message. Professor Morris Iwo, the microphone goes to him there. And then, thank you very much, as brief as possible. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Sibanjo. Your Excellency, our beloved Governor, distinguished Senator, Pope Uzodima, Your Royal Highness, the Obi of Onisha, and the other traditional rulers here present, the Chief of Defense Staff, and the other military officers here present. If I go through all the protocol, I think it will take all our time. Mine is just to say thank you. Thank you to Professor Sibanjo. Thank you to our governor. More important, thank you to the military. We need this opening to the sea. It will not only protect us, it will protect our resources. That is the oil that comes from here. It will also protect us from bandits who can easily come through here, but big ships will not be able to come. This is a project that we have for years wanted to take off. But because of one thing or the other, it has not been possible. And so I want to thank the Vice President for putting his name in the annals of history, for being the person whose name will be forever and ever pasted here as having opened our gateway to the sea. On behalf of Imo people, we want to say thank you. On behalf of Imo people, we want to say welcome. And thank you, the single ladies and gentlemen, for coming today to witness this very great occasion. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Morris Iwu. Let me quickly invite Member House of Representatives Abombi Sengop, our federal constituency, Honorable BDK, to add his voice quickly. Yes. At that spot, the microphone was used. Thank you. Is he one of my can? Is he one of my can? Ah, 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 your Excellency, the Governor, the Executive Governor of Imo State, my highly revered and respected leaders from Imo and Nigeria, highly respected traditional rulers across the nation, my leaders, Ndimonde Ewonu, and speaking on behalf of 
the National Assembly members from Imo State. Your Excellency, we are solidly behind you for this wonderful project. Your Excellency, you have made us proud. We were of PDP. Your Excellency, the Vice President, just two weeks ago, three of my colleagues, with all our supporters, num four, numbering over 5,000, defected from PDP to APC. And that was possible because of what our governor is doing in Imo State. The conqueror, the conqueror, the conqueror, the lion is here. Yeah. Zabu, zabu, enyimba, enyimba. Your Excellency, let me also make this confession. When we first heard about this Uguta Orashi dredging project, I was in PDP, and we were saying this is just one of those deceits of the 3R government. But today, I am highly very happy that as a member of APC, it has come to be a reality. And my governor, God will keep you. And until you finish this assignment God has sent you for, no man will remove you from this seat. And it shall be so in Jesus' name. Thank you, Indemon. That was the voice of the Honorable Pete Ake. May Be I, there. on same strength, invite Be there. Captain Inyana Cho. Captain Inyana Cho, with due respect, we invite you to the microphone to add your voice to this uh, professional milestone being witnessed today. Captain Inyana Cho, he has the height. Thank Retire. you. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. May I recognize the Vice President, welcome to Imo State. May I recognize His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Imo State. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. May I recognize the masked traditional rulers, the Ubi of Onucha, and all other traditional rulers who are here present. May I recognize the Chief of Defense Staff, the Chief of Naval Staff, all the military men who are gathered here today. It is my great pleasure to be given the assignment of commenting on what Governor Hopu Zodima has done with inviting us to come and witness the launching of the dredging of the Orashi River. I would like to say very quickly your Excellency, you have done an absolutely wonderful thing. You have delivered. We are past administrations. Just talked about it. They always talked about it, but they never got around to doing it. I remember a few years ago, and this was well before your predecessor came to office, well before you assumed office, I came down here on the reconnaissance mission to see for myself what the opportunities are that lie for us to dredge and to have an access to the sea. And I remember that on the occasion, the last occasion that I came, I met one gentleman who had spoken earlier on, that's Honorable Dr. Henry, and we were in Osemoto. And I was looking at all the monolithic structures that were there, and I said to him, these structures were not built yesterday. These structures have been here from time immemorial. And he agreed with me, and I said to him, what it proves is that our area has been the center of international commerce for a very long time indeed. And all it will take for us to ignite prosperity in our area is to find a way to dredge all the way to the sea. You recall, Your Excellency, that when you came on board, I came to you and I discussed it again. And I kept on talking about it. And today I am very pleased, Your Excellency, in the way that you have gotten around to doing things. You beat the bullet. You didn't just stand there talking about it. You have done it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you all know what this means for our area. 
if we have an access to the sea, a lot of the social problems that we have will be gone because the youth who cause all these problems will be gainfully employed. Either they are working on board the ships or they are working on board docks, they are working on board anything that is related to the maritime. So it is indeed a very worthy um, project that you have uh, come here to launch today. Your Excellency, I cannot uh, finish without making comments upon some of the projects that I see that you have embarked upon. I'm from Emekuku, and every time I go there, I see this huge equipment that I've never seen before. Absolutely doing something that other governors had dreamt of doing in the past. That is, dualizing the road all the way to Umuahia. In actual fact, when you come to Emekuku, in between Emekuku and the Mbise, you will see construction that is ongoing. Sometimes people come around and say, have they moved the second Niger bridge to Emekuku because of the quality of work that is being done there? Congratulations, Your Excellency. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to acknowledge all those who took time out from all they should have been doing to come and support us today. We are really very happy and we are proud that you are supporting us in this enterprise. I am a master marina. This is my job. I'll do anything for free. We've got to get this done and as quickly as possible. Your Excellency, once again, congratulations. God bless all those who came here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ndar Captain. Let me quickly do some uh, gender balancing. Mr. Vice President, permit me, sir, to invite uh, Senator Chris Anyangu. Senator Chris Anyangu, the microphone rotates to you now. Ladies and gentlemen, please, may we listen attend. This is a national event. Thank you. I hope the microphone has located distinguished Senator Chris Anyangu. Yes, if she's by the mic. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, my Governor, Senator Hope Uzodema, Chief of Naval Staff. It's good to see you, Chief of uh, Army Staff, and everybody. And your Royal Highnesses, uh, Abu Ogidi, and the only of IFE and the Chairman Igbo Council of uh, Ezes, uh, President General uh, Ohanese, all other protocols observed. Mine is a very quick one. I want to say that this is an um, um, emotional occasion for me because this event is something that predated the uh, uh, Senator Usodema's uh, tenure. It started, the idea started before he came. But he is a man that is able to capture the vision and to run with an idea. And today we are here. I speak as the former chairman, Navy, Senate Committee on Navy. And Navy is my family in the federal government. During my tenure, we saw the prospect of Uguta. I wrote a lengthy paper as to why Navy should come and locate a base here. And in fact, on one occasion, the entire top brass of the main Navy, they flew in here with about five helicopters. We reviewed the plane, we landed at the, at the golf course, looked at uh, some facility owned by Gogonwa Kuche, looked at other things, they were excited. What was there was enough for them to take off. But you see, you have to have a man of vision in authority on the local level. So, so, so the idea petered off. The Navy couldn't bite into what they were throwing on the line. And so when uh, Senator Uzodema came and mentioned it. I said, yes, go for it. 
And I want to thank you, Senator Zodema. I want to thank you, Navy, for partnering with this laudable project. I thank you, the Vice President, for sparing time to witness this. This is a good thing for Nigeria. It's a good thing for Nigeria. It will open up the hinterlands. It will create a lot of jobs. It will, you know, make this area safer. It will make commerce grow. It is good for Nigeria. It is worth investing in. Mr. Vice President, I plead with you, when you go back, please ask Mr. President to please drop some money for this so that it can be finished, so that this can be realized in no short, you know, distant future. I want to say that I'm so honored to be part of this ceremony today, and I want to thank everybody who's here. On behalf of Imo State, again, let me join uh, Professor uh, Iwu in thanking all of you for being here. Thank you, Hope, and thank you, everybody. That was the voice of uh, yeah. Senator yeah. Chris Sanyangu. Uh, the build up, the build up in front of uh, His Excellency, the Vice President, in front there, is not so decent. This is a national event, and uh, for the cameras, let me go ahead and invite the former Governor of Imo State, Dr. Ikedi Ohakim, His Excellency, to add uh, his voice to this key. moment of history. Dr. Ikedi Ohakim. Chief Ikedi, even one night, Jay, even one night, Bujingi, even in a major bandi karaka, e karaka. Your Excellency, the Vice President of Nigeria, Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, our amiable Governor, our distinguished traditional rulers, the President General of Ohanez Ndibo, Chief Emmanuel Iwanyamu, Honorable Ministers, especially the Honorable Minister for Trade and Industry, the Great Adebayo, the Chief of Army Staff, the Chief of Naval Staff, our great leaders, Professor Morris Iwa, our senators, members of the National Assembly, great people of Imo and Southeast, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Mine is to give goodwill message, and I hereby give goodwill message, and my goodwill message has been given. But be that as it may, the past speakers have captured the importance of this project. Mine is to put it on history that our governor, Governor Hope Uzodema, is a big thinker. It's only big thinkers that can think of projects that will go beyond the administration. If you see the projects he has put his teeth upon, you can see the projects that people are beginning to get surprised. Why is this man biting more than he can chew? But I can tell you he has not even started biting. I want to seize this opportunity to appeal to my people of Fendimo that the best way, the best thing we can do for this project to move forward is to give our total support to our governor. And that is why I am here today. The first written study for this project was dated 1959. Within the 100 kilometers of this project is where you have the most rich alluvial soil in the whole of West Africa dating about one million years. So opening up this route will open up the best agricultural land in the whole of West Africa. And if you check the study, the study will confirm it. So many things, so many obstacles have made this project impossible to realize. But when our governor came in, he started dismantling the obstacles one after the other one after the other, one after the other, and one after the other. Your Excellency, I want to join millions of Nigerians to compliment you for this wonderful step. I want also 
thank the federal government represented here by our vice president and the president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, for giving you the needed support. You warmed yourself to the federal government in an impeccable way. And the federal government has always cooperated with you and the people of Imo State. I want to thank everybody here present and congratulate all of us here that we have become part of history. History is being made here today and you have to thank your star that you have become part of that history. I thank my God that I'm part of that history today. All we need to do is to cooperate with our governor. If we do not do that, in the next 50 years, this project will not take up again. All we need is to give him support, to compliment him, to thank him for what he has done, to continue to pray for him and the people of Imo State, so that this project and numerous other projects he has undertaken will see the light of the day. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. And thank you for coming. God bless all of you. Okay, okay. Uzodima ekele mdi ah ekele Distinguished ladies and gentlemen uh, permit me at this point in time to remind us that the gentleman sitting with us here is the chief of defense staff General Loki Rabo CFR, not the chief of army staff. Maintaining the tempo of the goodwill messages, may I humbly invite the speaker, Imo State House of Assembly, Barrister, Right Honorable Barrister Emeka Nduka. Please do me a favor and make it as brief as possible. Thank you. The Vice President of our country, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, our beloved, courageous, performing, visionary, mm. victorious, mm. God fearing, God sent mm. governor mm. of Imo State. I Most distinguished senator Hope. I want a tilala in a TT, it will have a good time. I don't get it, get it. What you say, Morgan? The chief of naval staff, the chief of defense staff, all high class military men in our midst, high class traditional rulers in our midst. Permit me to stand on already established protocol. Your Excellency, this is a landmark project that will definitely stand the test of all times. Your Excellency, you have been able to do what others before you could not do. Your Excellency will continue to support you and will continue to pray for you. We all know that the dredging of Uguta Lake to Atlantic Ocean will definitely open the maritime industry of our dear state. I know what that means. Your Excellency will continue to pray for you and the, the good people of Imo State will definitely bring you back to okay. finish what you have started after 11th November 2023. Okay. Okay. On behalf of myself and the people of Ninth House, Imo State House of Assembly, once more we welcome our Vice President for making our time to come. Thank you and may God bless all of us. I want to see that I come in you, brother. You are a game changer. Thank you, thank you, thank you Felix. Thank you very much. On this note, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
May I move away a little bit from the high regimentation and move to the traditional institution. May I respectfully invite the Oni of Ife to add a royal voice to this great event. The microphone goes to the royal father at this time. Thank you. He must start in the money today is a very big day. Your Excellency, the Vice President of our their nation, the drama, the performing governor. Today, please permit me to stand on all already established protocol. I call the governor the drama, and it has a meaning. And I'm happy the entire Indibo, not only Imo states, they now see what I'm talking about. When you drum and you listen to a beautiful music, it will edify your soul. When you do fantastic projects for the people that you serve, for the people you govern over, it builds a legacy for you. And that's the meaning of a drama. Seven years ago, to be very specific, it was a senator. And uh, I have so much admiration, I still have it for him today. He was in PDP then. He said, Kabesi, we need to do something. I know where I'm going. I have a very clear vision for my people in Igbo land and particularly Imo. I want to get closer to the vice president of the country because I have some very strategic projects that we need the executive. You know I'm on the other camp. I'm a PDP member. So he gave me the assignment. I am happy Obinugu is here. Um, Jaja of Okobo unfortunately couldn't make it today. So he told me I should go ahead and make this thing happen. We went to the presidency. I went to speak with my very own vice president of this country. And he told me, Kabiesi, this is very good, but you know he's in the other camp. We have to be careful and make sure that we do things right. And look at it today. The two of them are seated together. The same camp. And doing great things for people of Imo State and the entire Igbo land. In the Igbo, you don't know the governor you have. I know him very well. He's very restless. He's very focused driven. He's very energetic. He wants to make a legacy for himself. He wants to do great things that people have never done before. One of it is what we are all experiencing today. Later on, I now spoke with the vice president of our their country. So what do you think about Senator Uzodima? Say KBAC is actually a fantastic man. I am cutting him and he knows what I'm talking about. Because I put him under so much pressure for him to actually put that differential in party affiliation. Let's look at our people. But I understand him. You know he's a professor and he likes to be very careful, very, very meticulous. When he speaks like this, he's a powerful orator. So I understand him. But our dear drummer, Senator Hope Uzodima, did not relent. Oh. He didn't relent. Today, I am one of the happiest Nigerians experiencing the flag off of this project. And I want to assure every citizen, every son and daughter of Imo State that this project has come to stay. This is not now that he's been thinking of it. I mentioned seven years ago, he was not even the governor of the state. He was just a senator in PDP. And he's been thinking aloud. So we need to have visionary leaders. And today, right under the sun, I am proud to be associated with Senator Hope Uzodima, the drama of our time. Keep drumming and we will all continue to dance and listen to your beautiful and sonorous music. God bless you. God bless Imo State. God bless the entire Indigo. And God bless our their country, Nigeria. Congratulations. Imo State.
Tindama, Imo State, Tindama. In the history of Imo State, Thank you, today is the first time different kinds of politicians I've never seen Ike and Hakim together with Chris Anyamu, together with Captain Ian Atom, together with B. The AK in one function on one. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, to maintain the level of royalty, may the microphone now switch royally to Obi of our nature. Abogidi. Thank you. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President. Your Excellency, uh, uh, Governor. Uh, please, may I stand on established uh, protocol, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, officers and men, traditional rulers, and one name, Dalunu, Dalunu, Dalunu. Um, I'll be very brief, and uh, my, my remarks are actually uh, based on nostalgia. Ah, I have to face the camera. Uh, based on nostalgia, <clears throat> because some 600 years ago, my hometown on which I was founded by Ezechima, our founding father, and his three sons. The third of his sons was named Dei, who lived in Onicha, had his uh, family there, and moved part of his family to Oguta, to found Oguta. That's the connection between Onicha and Oguta. So we are brothers and sisters. And in the olden days, it is the river and the lake that was a connection between all of us. And of course, if you look at the map of Uguta today, you see Calabari Beach from where palm oil and other produce, uh, uh, primary products were shipped from here to, um, to the coast to be shipped abroad. So in effect, Uguta was a, uh, an ocean port in those days. And that is what Onwa in his vision is reestablishing today. Thank goodness, Onicha also has uh, a river port that, will, uh, that uh, is going to run vessels to the ocean and we have to dredge in Niger. So, Onwa, what you're doing this time around is to restore the relationships, both commercial and family, that existed some 600 years ago. And I'm not surprised that you're doing that because you are also our in-law. And by extension, you are our son. So, Buko, uh, uh, I work with you below the radar screen on matters of security and peace building. Now, you know what we do at that level. And uh, we've achieved tremendous results, but still, there's a lot of work to be done. And I have to say that of all the governors of the Southeast, please, well, you can quote me, he's been most cooperative with us in the work we do traditional rulers and religious leaders. So, uh, just to wish you well that this project will succeed and to plead with everybody else on uh, His Excellency, our Vice President, to make sure, to help us make it work because it's a project for Nigeria, it's a project for the whole world. Thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with a deep sense of duty, could you please join me as a welcome to the microphone as the next speaker within the confines of two minutes, the Honorable Com Minister, sorry, I'm Honorable Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment, Otuba Richard Adeni Adebayo, to please take the microphone. The microphone now rotates to the Otumba Richard Adeni Adebayo, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Trade, <laughs> Industry and Investment, sir. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the Vice President. Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, the Chief of Defence Staff, the Chief of Naval Staff, Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be here today. Uh, my first knowledge of this project came from His Excellency, the Governor. I'm sure those of you who know him know that he had a habit of making phone calls late at night. Apparently, he had put in an application for a special economic zone status for this project, and it had been sent to my office. And he called me one midnight 
I started asking me about it. I did not know what he was talking about. And then he insisted that he would come to see me in the office to explain exactly what he wanted, which he did. Thereafter, he never for once let go of me. He kept insisting that he wanted this status for this project. Honestly, even reading what had been prepared, I did not have a full understanding of what this project was all about. However, I did my, uh, my uh, recommendation to His Excellency the President and sent it to his President's office. But it is only today that I have come here that I have a full understanding of exactly what this governor is trying to do. Honestly, I am still overwhelmed. I still don't understand how he's going to do it. First of all, to even get the Navy, the Nigerian Navy, to work with him and partner with him to put this project together on its own is a feat. When I saw him today, the first question I asked him, how are you going to afford to fund this project? He said, my brother, don't worry, we have worked it out. Honestly, all I can say is, honestly, I wish you all the best with this project. I think it is one project that will bring a lot of economic prosperity to the people here. As has been pointed out, it will do a lot in terms of security of the area. People of Imo, I congratulate you. Your governor, I have a name for him. And he is living up to his name. Key. Your Excellency, the hope of Imo. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, please. Thank you, Honorable Minister. May the microphone now go to the number one Igbo man worldwide, the President General Ohanez Ndigbo, Engineer Dr. Emmanuel Iwanyawo. Iwanyawo Ndigabiawo. Am I all right? Mm. Okay. Uh, Your Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, a very good friend of uh, Igbo people, we welcome you. Our, loves, our beloved son, our governor, a great achiever. We are very grateful to you. Uh, we have the Oni of Ife. Oni of Ife, let me take liberty to say thank you. Thank you. As I stand here and speaking for about 60 million Igbo people, I'm speaking for them. On your welfare, Igbos never forget those who actually support them and help them. I have listened to your comments at various times. At all times, you have stood up for us. On your welfare, we are very grateful. And I'm hearing for the first time that you played a role in getting this historic project to the point of be, be naturalized. We have here, of course, uh, your uh, brother, uh, uh, big, one of the biggest monarch in Ibo land, the Oni of, uh, of Onicha, but also the chief of defense staff, Irabo, who, is a, who is one of our beloved sons. He is lucky, he's a son of Ibo land. And uh, we are very happy you are here. Please, I will beg to uh, rest on the existing protocol. This is a very historic event. Many years ago, I was young, and I played a lot of part in developments. This project had been conceived had been by many past governments without any success. But today, we are gathered together on this soil to see the takeoff of this project. All speakers say it is historic. Indeed, all of us here are making history. Uh, Vice President, 
we thank you. Your name is going to appear in gold. And Igbo people, both born and unborn, will know that you are a friend. Last week, I was excited, and many of you too were excited, when a federal teaching hospital was established to be attached to a federal university. This was is, is a dream we have not thought for many years. But who made it to be realized? Hope was the one. For many years, we have we have pleaded to make Alvan Ikoku a federal university because it's one of the pioneer uh, schools of education, higher education in Nigeria. All the other ones are now universities. Some a past government even approved it, but hadn't the courage to produce it uh, to get to get it actualized. But now it has been actualized, and who made it possible? Uzodemwa. Now you see, if you go around the most Imo state, you will see a lot of projects. And then coming to our president. Uh, I would like the vice president to please, when you go, tell Buhari, we are very grateful. When he took office, we were not happy. We complained. But today, at the point of departure, things have changed. I can see that Onicha Bridge, the Niger Bridge, is completed. I can see that in most states, a lot has been done. For instance, in a Boy state, federal government has taken over the teaching hospital, taken over met, uh, even an airport. Here in Imo state, a lot has been done for us. Even in Enugu, the Enugu airport. So I would like you to tell uh, our son, uh, Buh 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 Buhari, that we are very grateful. And I want Buhari to realize that he is an Igbo son, an uh, honorary Igbo man. He has been honored by some Igbo states. I think Igbo states have honored him. I think Ebony have honored him. Others have honored him. Chieftaincy title in Igbo land is taken very serious. You have to help us tell Buhari that he is an Igbo son. He owes, he is a member of Ohanes and Igbo by this, by this honor given to him. And when I'm speaking here today, I'm also speaking on his behalf. We are very grateful for what he has done. But before he goes, whatever he can do to bring this thing, to make sure this project succeeds, will be highly appreciated. This project is very important, not just to Imo, but to the whole Imo people. I want to tell you that last week I had a call a Zoom meeting with Igbos in Europe. They talked about this project. On Saturday, I had a Zoom meeting with Igbos in America. They talked about this, and they promised to raise money to fund it, if need be. I had a meeting with, I got calls from Igbos in South Africa, from Igbos in, uh, uh, in China. So Igbo, Igbo people everywhere are interested in this. Your Excellency, Hopus Odimma, you are in the heart of, heart of all Igbos. I'm telling all, I'm, I, was in, I was a politician. I'm, I have resigned. I'm not in any political party. It doesn't pay anybody to continue criticizing for no just cause. When we praise Hope Uzodima, we are mentioning specifically what he has done. I think APC, you are lucky to have him. Your campaign is easy. The most difficult thing is for campaign for a governor who has achieved nothing. Hope has achieved a lot. So it is easy for you to campaign for him. Please, finally, uh, our Vice President, tell our brother, our son Buhari, that Ohanez Ndibo, the over 60 million Igbo's request that he should release Nam de Kalu. He should release Nam de Kalu. I don't, we don't see, Igbo's are not succeeding. I don't see why anybody should say Igbo's are succeeding. 
Igbos are everywhere. We have investments. Are we going to leave our investments? So please, I am passing this message to him because he is my president in Nigeria. But in the Hanese, he has been honored by us and he's a member. So he's my subject there. I am now telling him that Nnam Dikalu should be released before he departs. We are going to be very grateful. Meanwhile, I want to thank all of you and I wish you all safe journey home. Thank you. Thank you. Key. Thank you very much, sir. At this point, I most respectfully invite the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ez Gambo, Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, Admiral Meda, to kindly come forward to deliver his goodwill message. The Chief of Naval Staff, sir. Special guest of honor, Your Excellency, Volum, Volum. Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, His Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, Distinguished Senator Hope Uzodima. The Deputy Governor of Imo State, Professor Placid Njoku, and other members of the State Executive and Security Council of Imo State here present. The Chief of Defense Staff of Nigeria, General Loki Irabo, Commander of the Federal Republic. The Speaker, Imo State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Emeka Unduka and other members here present, our Royal Fathers present, especially His Imperial Majesty Adeyeye Eniton Babatunde Ogunusi Ojaja II, Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, the Oni of Ife. His Majesty Igwe Na Emeka Alfred Ugochuku Achebe, Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, the OB of Onicha. His Royal Majesty Dr. E.C. Okeke, Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, Chairman Imo State. Traditional Council, Elder Statesman, oh, statesman here present, especially our Reverend Chief Emmanuel Moyao, CFR, OFR, MFR, Deputy Whip, House of Representative, Honorable Inkiru. Georgia, former members of National Assembly here present and former governors, Senator Chris Anyao, our honored guests, members of the fourth estate of the realm. I am delighted to address this distinguished audience on this important and historic occasion of the flag of ceremony of the hydrographic survey of the Oguta Lake, Orashi River, the Gema, to the Atlantic Ocean. Pertinently, Nigeria's maritime environment comprising inland and offshore waters have remained a source of food and means of livelihood to coastal communities as well as the nation at large. 
It is also an indispensable medium for transportation of goods and services. History has it that during the colonial era, Nigeria's inland waters, including the river route from Oguta Lake to the Atlantic Ocean, were extensively used for trade by the British colonial government. Unfortunately, the river route from Oguta Lake to the Atlantic Ocean via Orashi River has remained largely underutilized since independence due to underdevelopment to support safe navigation by sundry vessels. Currently, the river access route from Oguta to the Atlantic is neither surveyed nor charted. Additionally, the route has never been dredged and there are no navigational aids to facilitate safe navigation. This exposed the river route for utilization by criminals to perpetrate all kinds of nefarious acts, economic sabotage, and other maritime crimes. It is against this background that the Nigerian Navy secured approval of the, of the Nigerian Navy Board 4 of 2021 to establish a naval base here in Oguta. Accordingly, naval base Oguta, on whose premises we are gathered, commenced operation in August 2021 through the support of the federal government and the good people of Imo State and its government. I am glad to mention that since the establishment of the base, illegal bunkering and crude oil theft along Oguta Lake to the Atlantic Ocean significantly reduced by 65%. Notwithstanding this achievement, operational review analysis reveals existence of maritime security gaps. This was attributed to the inability of the Nigerian Navy to deploy its bigger vessels to patrol the axis due to non-navigational route for the bigger platforms. This prompted execution of a memorandum of technical cooperation between the Nigerian Navy and Imo State Government on 8 December 2022 to develop Oguta Lake and Orashi River access to the Atlantic Ocean. A critical activity involved in the development of the access route is the comprehensive pre-dredging survey from the lake to the sea. Consequently, pre-dredging hydrographic survey of this critical river access could not have come at a better time than now. The route is undoubtedly critical because successful completion dredging will provide the Nigerian Navy opportunity to deploy bigger platforms that will patrol from the Atlantic Ocean to the hinterland up to Oguta Lake. Obviously, this will fill observed maritime security gaps along the river, thereby providing an enabling environment for wealth generation and other legitimate maritime activities. This will boost socioeconomic development of Imo State with attendant positive impacts on Nigeria's economy. To this end, I want to assure support of the Nigerian Navy on whose shoulders lie security of Nigeria's maritime environment as well as to produce updated charts that would culminate the next phase of the project which is dredging of the river access route. On this note, I want to appreciate the tremendous recapitalization of the Nigerian Navy by the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 
Muhammad Buhari, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, which has enhanced capacity of the Nigerian Navy to provide effective hydrographic service delivery for improved maritime security towards sustainable economic development of Nigeria. I also wish to thank the government of Imo State and its good people under the astute leadership of His Excellency, Governor Hope Uzodima, for partnering with the Nigerian Navy. We remain immensely grateful. I am optimistic that the Nigerian Navy is fully poised to provide needed support for security and actualization of Oguta Lake and Orashi River development and access to the sea project. To the host communities along the river banks, I implore you all to take ownership of this project as it will surely impact positively on your collective and individual security as well as socio-economic development of all your areas. For the Nigerian Navy Survey Team, I know that you have what it takes to deliver on this important mandate. Therefore, I wish you fair winds and safe survey operations. Let me end this remark by acknowledging our esteemed invited guests. I thank you all for coming and wish us all journey mercy back to our respective destinations. As you always say in the Nigerian Navy, onwards together, God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. At this juncture, my humbly crave your indulgence to most respectfully call on the Chief of Defense Staff, General LEO Mirabo, Commander of the Order of Federal Republic, to deliver his goodwill message. The Chief of Defense Staff, sir. Eh? Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Emo State, may I crave your indulgence to write on the already established protocol. Over history, nations around the world have established their militaries to the responsibility of providing safety and security for their people. But beyond that primary responsibility is having to undertake tax that aggregate to the development of today what we are witnessing is actually seen beyond the facade of what fighting to which the armed forces is engaged in and that's why i like to use this opportunity to thank his excellency the governor of Ibo state for understanding the critical role of the military and in this case the Nigerian Navy identifying the resources available which can add up in no small measure to economic development as a subset of creating the right environment for the liberty and freedoms of our peoples. Today I like to say that what we are witnessing and indeed what the us the project certainly we end up in we significantly improve on the security of not just this environment but equally the economic stability of every of the communities along the riverbank that this project will be touching 
I know quite a lot has been said regarding the spin-offs that will come, that we derive from this project. But let me take this liberty to let you know that the armed forces of Nigeria have the responsibility and indeed the ability to be able to contribute beyond war fighting, beyond having to engage in internal security operations, which is actually the, within the premise of the police. There are resources available which, when appropriately synchronized and utilized, will see us as a nation increase significantly in terms of our development. And I'm glad that this platform that the Imo State government has provided will be the springboard upon which many other engagements that the armed forces will be contributing as part of its effort to ensuring that Nigeria becomes much better than what we find today. And I'm delighted to be a part of it and I'd like to once again thank you and by extension thank the special guest of honor and of course his Excellency President Mohamed Buhari, who, the President of Nigeria, who of course has given us the leverage to be able to build our capacity possible for us to make this contribution in this regard. And thank you and wish that the project will be successfully completed. Thank you and God bless. Okay, okay, okay. You look past my sin, sunshine, man, you damn boy, your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond him, oh. You see what? You have shown me. You have shown me. Bring it down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, permit me, sir, that in the wisdom of the Governor of Imo State, some sons and daughters of Nigeria were put together to arrange this event under the chairmanship of his able chief of staff, Barrison Nambianye. But permit me, sir, to invite the Pro Chancellor and the Chairman Governing Council, Imo State University, a son of the soil, Obuagu Ernest Wapa, to give a very brief word of thanks before I invite the Chief Host for his address. Ernest Wapa Obuagu, please, a very brief vote of thanks. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Vice President of our dear country, Nigeria, Professor Yomi Osibanjo, Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, Your, uh, Your Royal Highnesses, uh, the Oni of Ife, Abogidi, Honorable Minister of Industries, the President General, Ohaneze, past governors of Imo State, my own senator. I speak today on behalf of the Ezigwe of Uguta and the Privy Council of which I'm a member. We want to very heartily thank His Excellency. And um, it will just have been a very easy thing for me to do to say thank you and go and sit down to save time. But I think it's important to highlight a few important things about this ceremony and what we are doing today. In fact, when I look at the front row, I find that everybody has had something to do with Ukuta historically. And I want to say that as a young man growing up in this town, the history of this town, in fact, where we, are st uh, where we are having the ceremony is like where the British system operated from. And this town, as I've said several times, had the first refinery, the first oil refinery in Nigeria, and the first seaport in this part of the country. 
it was in that beach over there that the eastern regional trade flourished. All the palm canal trade started from here. So what we're doing today is an, a reenactment of something that stopped for over 80 years. And it's not because people have not wanted to do it. Everybody that has come to govern this state has found it necessary. In 1975, the Asika administration, around 1974-75, found it necessary to build a golf course here and a motel. It was not a local motel. It was not for Imu State. It was for international um, use. That hotel has been that hotel has been run down, but today it's playing a very important role. So when people ask me, Ernest, is this dredging thing going to happen? They are thinking of the past system with Chief Hope Uzodima, the Onwa Oyoko. We know. I know, because I did not know him from today. I knew him when he was a young contractor coming to NMPC to look for work. And he will, put, he will pitch his tent on contracts that were reserved for people like Julius Berger. And I will tell him, oh, well, why don't you come and do some of these other contracts that... And he will say, no, 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 leave it. I will do it. So I always call him Onye Meri. The meaning of Onye Meri is a winner. Yeah. So when he told me about this Uguta project, I sit down in many clubs and people tell me, how can you do this thing? Where is the, where is the channel? Where? And I say to him, I say to them, once it's hope, I'm going to support it and I'm going to do everything for my people to get back Uguta. Because we've nearly lost Uguta. Uguta is so significant that the Royal Niger Company had a warehouse, five companies of the British um, mold. We're here. This is where, as a, a young boy, I saw families from Onisha, Asaba, Port Harcourt, um, Calabari, coming here to trade and live here. Now, what we see in Uguta is illegal bunkering until again, the same hope brought the Navy here. I had to move out of my house because I couldn't understand. I, I was dying of the smell of diesel. So, um, once again, let me say that the steps you've taken, Your Excellency, are very systematic. First of all, when you said Navy was coming, it was like a joke because everybody, Navy has had land in Uguta for more than 20 years. Navy has, had, Navy has been coming here, like uh, Senator Chris Anyangu said, even when the Chief of Naval Staff came here, did everything, it didn't happen. But it was so tough that when they came and they had obstructions, you even told me to house them in my hotel. So that's a man who wants to do something. And now they are using facilities that are a makeshift to run the thing. Now getting a free trade zone, my Agbon um, Ni that um, is working on it, please, we have to follow him bumper to bumper to finish everything before he goes out. Thank you. Because I can tell you that a place like Ladol was ordinary swamp. But once they got a free trade zone license, all the business in the oil industry went to that place. And I want to say that this pot and this dredging thing will not only help us with security. There are so many proposals for investments along the banks, but people keep asking, how do we evacuate? Once this thing happens, my Uguta people, please listen very carefully. Get ready to benefit and help us to thank the government and the people of Imo State, and most especially the Vice President and our own dear President, Muhammad Buhari, for giving us this opportunity to see Uguta coming back to life again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this point in time, let me request all of us to please be orderly. If you have provision for seats or canopies, you go into it and allow proper sighting of everything that is arranged for this event. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, if you look towards the waters, you can see this community, Uguta, they are performing dances already on the sea since you came in here. At this point in time, I want to invite 
your chief host, the man who has the vision, who continues to give Imo people the hope that tomorrow could be better than today. Ladies and gentlemen, a man of vision, a man who has translated from nothing to something. Many years ago, Federal Road Safety called this land, land of hope, without knowing that one day hope will be the governor. Ladies and gentlemen, join me as I invite His Excellency, distinguished Senator Hope Uzodema, to the podium. Chine Kimka, Asim Gika, Chine Kimka, Asim Gika, Oye Bini Gwe, Chine Mene Mumma, Oye Nika Chine Zembini, Abonye Ajiri Papa Nkeli Gwe, Eze Bube Nare Keli Me, Chief Ikedo Hakim, former governor of Imo State. The Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ez Gambo, the Deputy National Chairman of the largest party in black and white Africa, APC, Southern Region. Chief Ima Enoku, sitting with the state chairman of our great party, Chief McDonald Ebere, PhD. The secretary to the government of Imo State, Chief Cosmos Iwu, the chief of staff to the governor, Barristan Nambi Ayehe. Members of Imo State expanded the executive council. The President General Mohanes Ndebo Worldwide, our great leader, Chief Engineer Isi Iwayaun, senior military officers in our midst, all government and political appointees, heads of security agencies in Imo State, heads of paramilitary organizations in Imo State. Revered and respected traditional rulers in Nigeria. His Royal Majesty, the Obi of Onisha. His Royal Majesty, the Oni of Ife. The Chairman, Imo State Council of Traditional Rulers. His Royal Highness, Eze Isi Okeke. The Chairman of our most respected. Imo Eda's Council, His Royal Highness, SSCI Ilomaya, his Deputy and the Executive, and all other members of the Eda's Council of Imo State in our midst. Your Royal Highnesses, Ndeze, distinguished Imo leaders and stakeholders, 
captains of industries in our midst, representatives of international organizations, our investment partners and technical partners, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a historic and joyous day for the government and people of Imo State. I'm particularly excited that no less a personality than our beloved brother and the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osipanjo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, is here. He's here with other dignitaries, distinguished, to mark and celebrate this joyous occasion with us. This former flag off of the Hydrographics Survey and dredging of the proposed sea route from Oguta Lake to Rach River up to Degama and indeed the Atlantic Ocean is a dream come true. It can be likened or compared to the successful birth of a baby after a very long period of gestation and a very long period of expectation. But as the saying goes, God's time is always the best. And to the glory of Almighty God, the much expected glorious day has come. Our immeasurable gratitude goes to President Mohammed Buhari, GCFR, through whom God has made this day possible. We thank the President of Nigeria. We thank him for so many things he has done to the people of Imo State and indeed in Debo. We thank him for the approval to locate a naval base in Oguta, Imo State. We thank him for the upgrade of Federal Medical Center Oware to a university teaching hospital to enable students of Federal University of Technology Oware handle their clinical training. We thank him for the upgrade of our Avanico College of Education to Federal University of Education. We thank him also for approving our palm oil industrialization program, which allows us to replant the other palm plantation, install basic refineries and industries that will use palm oil as a raw material. And within the five years period, we will wait for the newly planted trees to grow. He gave us an approval to import 500,000 metric tons of palm oil for use by the industries under Imo State Backward Integration Program. We can't thank him enough the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we salute your generosity, your concern. We thank you for the support you gave to us to recover Imo State from the hands of bandits. Mr. President, our joy knows no bound. At this juncture, let us pause to formally and most warmly welcome the Vice President, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, for agreeing to be here in person today, despite his busy schedule, for the concern and support he has given to me and the people of Imo State since my assumption into office as the Governor of Imo State. I want to thank the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, for being here today despite the shortness 
of the notice issued to him. Johannes, I have said, is our brother, one of our best and brightest. The chief of Nava staff, we must thank you on behalf of the government and people of Imo State for the support, for the concern, for rescuing us from the hands of criminals, for the rugged way you fought crude oil theft in our waterways. We want to thank you and through you the Nigerian Navy. The Minister of Trade and Investment, Otumbani Adebayo, I want to thank you and assure you the way we will do the project is not going to be a magic, but it may be a miracle. We are going to do that through public-private partnership. We are not going to rely solely on government budget. All other dignitaries who are here for this historic occasion, I want to thank you. May the good Lord Almighty bless and reward all of you for the various roles you played in making this project possible. You would all remember, by posterity you will be remembered, for the roles you have played to facilitate this project. As a matter of fact, many of my predecessors had they tried to achieve this project for the benefit of Nigeria and the Imo State. However, this project could not take off, probably because President Buhari was not the president, and maybe because Admiral Awal Gambo was not the chief of army the Naval staff. It could also be because Hope Uzodema was not the governor of Imo State. But today, through the mercy of God Almighty, this project has seen the light of the day. The project being flagged off today is a harbinger of several other multifaceted development projects encapsulated in security and economic development. Before diving into this phase, which we are flagging off today, we conducted a number of preliminary studies that involved a detailed geophysical, bathymetric, and geotechnical survey of the entire Uguta Lake and its immediate tributaries. Desktop studies and verification of satellite der der derived imaging were also conducted. The survey being flagged off today, however, involves the determination and mapping of the existing water depths all through the proposed sea route from Oguta Lake to Orash to Degema and finally to the Atlantic Ocean. As a young man, I was very familiar with Oguta Lake and its environs. I recollect that it served as a trading post between the people of Oguta and other members of the Niger Delta region. As we grew up, we also read the history and stories of the activities of foreign companies such as the Royal Niger Company. As a matter of fact, the Royal Niger Company brought their ships and boats to take away raw materials and other produce from, the, from this area. The trade was such that we even had Calabari and Opobo sheds. By the way, just before us is a solid relic sitting there. That was the office of the Royal Niger Company that was built in 1929. And when it, it was built, it has stayed there up to date. The same roof, 
the same structure, everything in there. The government of Imo State has commenced its rehabilitation and upon completion, it will be handed over to Nigerian Navy for use. This will complement the 18 hole golf course just a few meters away from here, which we shall all also revive as a recreational facilities for the officers and men of the Nigerian Navy and members of the public. Basically, this axis provided the economic platform for the entire Niger Delta people. However, and unfortunately, with the exploration of crude oil, illegal oil bunkers, oil tubes took over the routes. And because the water was no longer deep enough due to long time of citation over the years, it became almost impossible for security agencies to employ the requisite ships to checkmate the hoodlums. In a nutshell, the hydrographic survey and the dredging, which is a prelude to the clearance of the entire route, will serve the dual purpose of engendering economic development and maritime security. Let me thank the Naval High Command for the partnership in this project alongside other members of the consortium whose expertise will reinvigorate the thorough execution of this project. I am confident and optimistic that the people of Southeast will experience economic boom when this project is fully realized. This will manifest not only in increased trade activities, but also in the form of additional employment opportunities for citizens of Imo State and indeed the Southeast region as a whole. What we are doing here today is to sow the seeds of unquantifiable employment and economic opportunities for the future. And this project alone can make the Southeast region a robust, self-sufficient economy. And there is no better time to do this than a time like this, when our economy is in urgent need of diversification. To further boost the economy of the region, my administration intends to establish an industrial cluster around the region to trigger industrial development. The emphasis shall be on the industries that will use the large gas deposits in the area as raw materials for production. As you know, Imo State has the largest gas deposit in Nigeria today. Incidentally, President Mohamed Buhari has approved only a few days ago, both as a trade free zone for the region as well as a palm oil development and industrialization program which Imo State proposed to him. This sits well with the Niger Delta area. The biggest palm industry in Africa, the other palm, is located in the region. So the cluster industries we plan to establish will not target only gas as a raw material, but also oil palm as well. On the other hand, the cultural ties between the people of Southeast and the people of South South will be strengthened through bilateral trade that will resume along the coastal areas. And finally, our security forces will be more equipped to track down the oil tips, thereby boosting legitimate commerce and shoring up the revenue that accrues to the country through public-private partnership. It is indeed my hope that sometime in the future, we will all look back and remember this day as the day we all collectively unburdened the economic potentials of this uniquely endowed region of the country. It is on this happy note that I, the governor of Imo State, on behalf of the people and good people and government of Imo State, most respectfully, 
invite His Excellency, Mr. Vice President, to graciously proceed to flag off the hydrographic survey and the dredging of the proposed sea route from Oguta Lake to Orash to Degema and the Atlantic Ocean. I want it on record that the government and people of Imo State will not rely on federal government budget for this project. We will rely on Imo State and private sector to fund this project to fruition. May God bless all of us as the Vice President. Thank you. I can see everything turning around. Everything turning around. Everything turning around. Me must it. I can see everything turning around. Everything no. Everything no turning around. Me must it. much please sit your excellency the governor of Imo state senator hope uzodima members of the national assembly present especially the deputy whip the honorable in kiruka and honorable eugene tibiago the honorable minister of trade and investment Otumbani Adebayo, the Deputy Governor of Imo State, Professor Placid Njoku, and other members of the State Executive and Security Council present, Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, CFR, Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awal Zubairu Gambo, CFR, the Speaker of the Imo State House of Assembly, the Right Honorable Emeka Nduka, and other members present. Royal Fathers present, especially His Imperial Majesty Adeyeye Enito Ogunwusi Ojaja II, OFR, the Orni of Ife. His Majesty Igwe Emeka Alfred Ugochuku Achebe, CFR, the OB of Onija. His Royal Majesty Dr. E.C. Okeke, CFR, Chairman, Imo State Traditional Council. Elder statesmen present, especially the President General of the Ohanes in Digo, Chief Emmanuel Nwayao, CFR, OFR, MFR, the Deputy National Chairman South of the APC. Chief Emma Eneku, former Governor of Imo State, Chief Ikedi Ohakim, former members of the National Assembly present, especially Senator Chris Ayawu, members of the State House of Assembly, serving and elect, members of the National Assembly elect, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by bringing the very warm felicitations of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, who has asked me to extend his congratulations to the governor and the government and the people of Imo State today. It's a very special pleasure for me to join you at this historic flag off of the hydro hydrographic survey and dredging of the proposed sea route from Oguta Lake, Orashi, Degema to the Atlantic Ocean. This project is a vital collaboration between the state government, the Nigerian Navy, and a consortium of technical partners. It was initiated and approved under the stewardship of President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Hope Uzodima. As we've heard, almost as far back as 1914, the British, understanding its strategic importance in connecting the hinterland to the coast, utilized this route to facilitate the smooth export of produce, such as palm oil, timber, and coal, from Oguta and its neighboring regions. The route has always been a vital component of our national potential for increased trade 
and economic prosperity. Today, we aim to revive this once vibrant and economically strategic channel, furthering job creation and sustainable growth in Imo State and the entire Southeast region, and indeed our nation. By enhancing coastal connectivity and facilitating seamless transportation, the project will promote trade and investment and spur growth in multiple sectors, including shipping, manufacturing, agriculture, and also offer numerous opportunities for the people. But the good news doesn't end there. The president only a few days ago, as we've heard from the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, granted Governor Hope Uzodima's request to declare Oguta, Ohaji, Egbema, and environs as an oil and gas free trade zone. This proposed free trade zone, this proposed free trade zone has one of the largest hydrocarbon deposits in the country. Again, this is another clear winner. The synergy between the dredge sea route will deliver enormous commercial benefits. Also, with the dredging project, the Navy will be better equipped to protect our coastlines, thereby curbing crude oil theft and illegal bunkering and other criminal activities that appear to have taken advantage of the very difficult terrain for the operational use of naval platforms. A secure environment paves the way for thriving business and increased revenue for all parties, including states and the federal government as improved access to the sea stimulates exports and imports, the coastal communities in these parts will be better positioned to reap the benefits of increased trade and income. And there is no better time to have set this in motion than now. You can rest assured that the federal government will continue its support to the state in ensuring that we bring this project to fruition and realize its full capabilities. But none of this can be done without the full support of the community, who without doubt remain invaluable partners in unlocking the vast potential of this region. Your participation, understanding and cooperation are essential in overcoming any challenges that may arise during the implementation phase. I therefore urge you all to join hands with the state government and stakeholders to ensure a seamless execution that benefits everyone. By working together, we can create a vibrant economic corridor and transform our community and benefit all of us for generations to come. Let me especially commend the foresight and political pragmatism of your dynamic governor, His Excellency Hope Uzodima, who I call the great hope always. Key, key, key. Aside from the numerous infrastructure projects that he has undertaken in barely three years, and I've been here to commission several road projects, he has also mastered the art of close collaboration with the federal government for the benefit of this state and the Southeast region. This project, for, for example, could not have been done without the blessing of the president. The oil and gas free zone also needed an obtained presidential approval. Again, on the governor's application, as we've heard, and his request, the president approved the complete takeover of the Alvin Ikoku College of Education, Oweri, as well as the conversion and upgrading of the Federal Medical Center, Oweri, to a teaching hospital for the training of doctors by the Federal University of Technology, Oweri. The last time I was here in Imo, it was to commission a garment industry shared facility for Imo young people. Also, donated at the urging of the governor by the federal government under our MSME clinics program. Not long after, His Excellency Mr. President also graced this land personally to commission key road projects. But this project that we are here today to flag off is a unique one. There are projects and there are projects. This is an economic transformation project. It is a game changer. It is a game changer for Imo State, 
Nigeria, and the west coast of Africa. It is one of those one-of-a-kind projects whose benefits have always been glaring, but vision, courage, and tenacity were required to bring it to fruition. And we all owe Governor Hope Uzodima gratitude for bringing hope to our nation and our sub-region. I will commend him for his wise, creative, and focused leadership. Your Excellency, I urge you to keep up the great work. This state and our nation will be all the better for your purpose-driven governance and leadership. It is now my very special pleasure and privilege to officially flag off this historic endeavor, the hydrographic survey and dredging of the proposed sea route from Oguta Lake to the Atlantic Ocean. This project will fulfill its promise of radical transformation. Amen. Not only for this economy, but the economy of the Southeast, our nation, and our region, and also for the benefit of all of our peoples. Thank you all very much for listening. Well, let's see, let's see. Special announcement. Please, only the governor, the minister, the service chiefs are allowed to accompany accompany the vice president to the flag of the governor the honorable minister the please please may we remain may we remain in our seats may we remain in our seats this is a symbolic thing and it is being covered internationally all the aides are not even required to be around there. His Excellency the Governor, the Minister, the Service Chiefs for the flag off. Himanachine can the memo for name is a good. When you took me, Rim, I am become a yaw. I want a tea law, I see me so quick. We work and let you want to talk, Father, Father, Helen, 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 Father, Father, Hey, Ali Pamuloya, Father, Father. Felix, Ice uh, Water, please remember that when His Excellency, the Vice President, and the Governor come back, there will be a group photograph of our VIPs. After which we call it a day. All eyes are towards the flag of ceremony by His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic. Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Puzodima. See the Deputy Governor. Honorable Minister, members of the National Assembly, traditional rulers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my very special privilege and pleasure to officially flag off the hydrographic survey and dredging of the Okta Orashi Degema all the way to the Atlantic Ocean route. For the benefit of people of region, our nation, Nigeria, and the west coast of Africa, and the glory of the Almighty God. Amen. Yeah. By the rivers of Ugutalek. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Ladies and gentlemen, with the ritual of the open the flag of Christ of Ugutalek, there we stand. Oh, see.
banjo Commissioning a wasipa By the rivers of Pukuta land There we sat down Osi banjo, osi banjo Commissioning a tipa For the dance, carry us away Sporting carry and the rice, exporting and importing. The land of us of our man, and we so far. Be acceptable in our sight, oh Lord. Oh, oh, oh. How about music then? Boy, I want. Senator Hope was on man. I'm sure okay. we'll be the happiest. But the river up who good talent. The wizard down. Oh, see banjo. Oh, see banjo. Commissioning a seaport. By the river up who good talent. 
there we sat down. Oh, we are in a chuck, don't commissioning as he put again by the river. So, who could tell it? There we sat down. Oh, see, banjo commissioning as he by the river so who could tell it? There we sat down. Oh, see, banjo commissioning as he put by the side by the river. So, who could tell it? Ice. Thank you very much. Uh, your Excellencies have been led back to their seat to enable us to have a controlled and regimented a group photograph. And immediately after that, we shall also take the national anthem. And so, the group photograph, I, I don't know whether it is still possible. Ladies and gentlemen, may we go to our seats so that we can see clearly. Mr. Mekabo, help me to look beyond where I am. Thank you. Bright in Wenwe, Munkoma. Ima na professor ni na yoti no kwa nebae. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that the press secretaries are controlling uh, the photograph now. That is the session where we are. Group photograph. With His Excellency, the Vice President and the Governor of Imo State and all the service chiefs. With our traditional rulers, the VIP is there. And once it is done, mm -hmm. it will be a signal for the national anthem. Omo yoko, honorable Steve Asino Bissem. Ekele mgi, ha, ekele. Ekele, ekele na mama. Onye ne ya nyinchana, mano sa nyinsabaro. Oni manyo bioma. Whether the photograph is going on, it's going on, it's going on, so yeah. that we know when they are ready for yeah. the natural yeah. He let them yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. know, yeah. yes, in one combo, what you say, more going in my shape, we are damn, damn, it's your We go follow no road. On one. We go follow no road. On one. 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 On one.